State Warriors hoisting that trophy high, reaching their six finals in eight seasons, something that we haven't seen since the 90s Chicago Bulls as they advance prepare to play the Boston Celtics. With that said, we bring in Mark Medina, writer for NBA.com, who knows everything about the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. He covers everything in the NBA, but focus is on the Warriors. So the talk has been about Steph Curry. We know that he has had an illustrious career, but that finals MVP has seemed to elude him so far. So what is his approach as he enters his six finals? You know, I don't think Steph Curry is going to change his approach. He's going to tap into what has made him the greatest shooter of all time. I think the best leader in today's NBA and an emerging playmaker and defender. But there's no doubt Steph Curry has accomplished so many things in his career, with exception at getting that finals MVP and getting that Olympic gold medal. The Olympic conversation half the table for another day, but as it pertains to the finals MVP, I'm really sure that it means a lot to them. That being said, Steph Curry did not lose sleep when he lost the finals MVP to Andre Iguodala in 2015, and then to Kevin Durant in 27 and 2018. He was all about the other hardware, the championship hardware, but knowing how Steph operates, he always wants to uh, you know, play at his best, and he's always looking for you know, slivers of, of motivation that enhance the larger goal. So no doubt it would mean a lot to him if he's able to get his first finals MVP trophy this year. I'm sure he would be happy as well as his splash brother, Clay Thompson, 2019. That's where everything changed in the finals. He misses 941 days, comes back at the end of the season, and it seems like he's improving as the rounds go on. We saw his uh, improvement, as I mentioned. Now, how did the dubs keep him engaged while he was out and how has that helped him out now as they enter the finals? Yeah, well, it's been a long two and a half years for Clay Thompson. And, you know, there were a lot of, uh, you know, tough moments. But I think the overwhelming consensus when you talk to people on the Warriors is that there was still a resiliency that Clay Thompson showed through through the monotonous nature of rehabs and any setbacks. Um, and I think that, you know, talking with Clay, not only did he try to stay disciplined, with his rehab regimen, but he also tried to, you know, uh, tap into things that really help him outside of basketball when it comes to, you know, reading and enjoying the outdoors, swimming, boating, meditating. And so when you fast forward to this season, when he came back in January, you know, there were some ups and downs with that, with just coming off of an injury, getting his conditioning back up to speed you know, getting through shooting slumps. And so he relied on some of those lessons learned in his rehab. And when you fast forward to now and the NBA finals, I don't think that you've seen the Clay Thompson pre uh, 2019 finals injury, but I think you've seen uh, flashes of his performances like he did in game six against Memphis, uh, a handful of games where he's going on a shooting tear. He's not the same player that he was defensively, but that's okay. The Warriors have really uh, leaned on Andrew Wiggins to fulfill that end of the bargain. I think at the end of the day, the Warriors have been encouraged that he's shown steady progress throughout that and that they also know that he's not the finished product. So they anticipate he'll be at his best uh, during these NBA finals and the next season, he'll be able to build on top of that. Well, he was a winner as a player and now as a coach. What have you gathered from listening to Steve Kerr as he reflects on that Bulls run that he was a part of, but also in comparison to what these present day Warriors are doing. Yeah, well, I think, you know, during the dynasty years and this year, the common denominator, Steve Kerr really knows how to manage his star players in terms of their workload, you know, protecting them from themselves. And then also, uh, you know, really empowering role players and putting them in positions to succeed without harping as much on things they can't do. And that's something that he can relate to during his NBA career because he knew what it was like to play with star teammates and he also knew what it was like personally to be a role player. And so I think what's interesting with this Warriors identity is, um, you know, I know lots have been made about, you know, the 90s Bulls and the, the Warriors championship teams and which ones were better. And that's obviously a healthy debate for either side. But no doubt there was the common denominator that both teams, they went in the finals for consecutive years. They were the heavy favorites. And now I think with, with this uh, current Warriors team. It almost reminds me of the San Antonio Spurs, where they have that continuity with a really good head coach, whether it's Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, a really good trio with their core players, with the Warriors, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green with the Spurs, Tim Duncan, Monte Ginobili, and Tony Parker, and then a sprinkle of really good role players, a lot of good team culture, 
a lot of continuity. And so I think moving forward, uh, the Warriors are really trying to become the next version of the Spurs, of always having that chance of maybe not being the NBA championship favorite, but always being in that conversation. And no doubt they're in that conversation this year with being in the finals against the Celtics. Indeed, and that one common denominator with the Bulls, Warriors, and Spurs, Steve Kerr, who spent time with all three organizations. Mark, we appreciate you for spending time with us and dropping the knowledge as 